doesn't exactly apply to our category, but I certainly think she has deserved it because she was the first lady of comics. Joan Lee passed away this week. She was yeah. the wife of comics legend Stan Lee. And um, she was his bride for 69 years they were together. I just interviewed them uh, on, in January. There's a company called Legion M that wanted to do a... Uh, a legacy interview with Stan uh, at his house in VR format. So essentially they shot, you know, if you've ever heard the terms thrown around, 2K, 4K, right. those are uh, kind of uh, formats that are common right now because that's what you can screen things in as well. Uh, they had cameras that were shooting at 12K, wow. so they didn't have an ability to watch it back. I was like, let's watch it. They're like, we don't have a monitor that can play it yet. So I'm like, boy, I hope it fucking turned out and shit. We'll never know. <laughs> So um, while we were doing the piece, like it's cool, it's a VR piece eventually when it's done. So you'll be in the room with us while we sit there and talk and I just like, go over his entire life and his career. So we did it at, at Stan's house and so uh, they brought Joni up as well. And you know, Joni was 93 years old, Stan's 94. So Joni came up to be interviewed and you know, it's top floor of Stan's house, there's all these fucking Marvel mementos sitting around and stuff. And Joni sat down for what had to be the billionth interview about, like, so, your husband, huh? Fucking, huh? Spider-Man? <laughs> and she's like, and, you know, she's so wonderful, and, and she's a British woman, so she has this wonderful accent. And, you know, she's telling the same story she's been forced to tell as the wife of the ambassador of comics for the last 50 years right. and stuff. So, in the middle of asking her to tell the story yet again, which we'd heard Stan just tell, but the very famous story about uh, Stan wanted to quit Marvel. He was like, I'm done with this. And they had, there were no superheroes yet and stuff. They were doing uh, funny animal comics, they were doing westerns, nurse comics, romance, uh, caption funnies where you take a photo of somebody real and then put a funny word balloon on it. But Stan wanted to write. Stan wanted to write the great American novel, and he felt that the comic books were like, he wasn't getting to do what he wanted to, to do in the books, and he didn't think it was worth his time. He wanted to move on, pitch the dream of being a writer. So his wife, young wife at that point, Joni, uh, who he had met when she, he went to a party and knocked on a door, and she was just on her way out to get air, and she opens the door, and Stan Lee, ever the writer, and you got to remember, this is the man who's given us our modern mythology. The words out of his mouth are so smooth, he goes, Oh my God, you're so beautiful. I've been drawing you my whole life. <laughs> now, I'd fuck Stan Lee with a line like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And the way Stan tells the story, they were together from that point forward. And they were each other's best friends and stuff. So there's Joni uh, telling the story yet again of, uh, you know, Stan wanted to quit. I'm not going to try to do her beautiful voice. I can't even do it. But she says, Stan wanted to quit. And I said to him, just look, if you're quitting anyway, just write what you want. Like, just write try one write, the way you want. Write one yeah. the way you want to do it. Fuck him. She didn't say fuck him. But like, you know, do your thing. And he's like, okay. And he went in and he wrote that and it was Fantastic Four number one, which is the birth of the Marvel Universe. Many consider it to be the modern Marvel Universe. And that's, that begins a long run of fucking creating some of the most uh, well-known characters that pop culture has ever seen. Used to be pop culture, they're so dominant now, it is the culture. Right. So one could make the argument that if his best friend in the world, Joan, doesn't say, give it a shot, write one for you. We never get the Marvel Universe. It right. doesn't happen and stuff. like It all stops with fucking Batman and Superman. So she was a powerful, powerful woman. She's telling that story yet again, dutifully, as the woman who sat by him and, and you know, listened to him talk about comics forever and talk about Spider-Man and Hulk, who would beat who and stuff. <laughs> Stan is an absolute Pied Piper for books, has been ever since we were kids. So in the middle of it, responding to that question and telling that story yet again, she stops and she just gets very emotional. Her eyes glass up, and she goes like this. And I was like, are you all right, Joni? And she goes, it's always Spider-Man, Spider-Man, Spider-Man. They don't know the writer that this man truly is. Poems every day for the last 50 years or more. And she started quoting poetry that Stan wrote. 
Wow. She's in my line of sight and she's on camera. Stan's off camera, but right behind her. Joni's getting, like, she's crying, talking about her, the, her beautiful best friend, man she spent her entire fucking life with, and how even though we all love him for the shit we love him for, Here's we more. never scratch the surface. Yeah. The guy is a truly amazing, gifted writer. And there's Stan just off camera, man, and rolling a tear. Uh, These two fucking sweet. loved each other, dude, in a way that, like, you know, sometimes you're married, I'm married, sometimes you're like... Oh my God, we, how many more years of this? Like, <laughs> are we done yet? Those two were never done with one another. They were each other's best friends. Like he had to be done with things at like five, six o'clock. So he'd go home, have dinner with Joni and they could take a nap and stuff. Like, and where he was, she was. Every event I always saw him at, she was by his side. She was the inspiration for a character in the books and in the cartoons mostly called Madam Webb. She looked like her as well. But uh, yeah, it, it was heartbreaking to, to read. I mean... She was 93, he's 94, but still. They were so vibrant, dude. Again, just in January. And what do you do at 94 after, after 70 years of marriage without your best friend and partner? I just I feel for him that the, the, the absence is going to be Absolutely. difficult. So this week, if you're hearing this, you know, jump on social media, Twitter, Instagram. Throw him love. Yeah. A lot of love right now. He needs to be reminded because imagine your best friend of, of seven decades is suddenly gone. You, you want, maybe, maybe it's good the rest of us remind him how important he is to all of us. Here's a stuff. shot of the two of them together. We have that picture. I just think it's so beautiful. It's like, there they are. And it's just everywhere they went together, constantly. His arm was around her. He was kissing her. He was holding her hand. He was touching her. She loved him, dude. Like, he couple. absolutely loved her, but she loved him. Yeah. Like, it was clear in the interview, but it was always clear in their lives together. You walk around. I've been lucky enough to be in their home. You walk around and it's not like what you would think where every fucking square inch is marble, but you see their lifetime together. And she appointed that house fucking beautifully. It's like a museum, man. There's a, there, there's a Charles, I don't even know if I'm supposed to share this. Charles Schultz, the Peanuts creator, mm -hmm. only did two paintings in his entire life. And one of them hangs in Stan Lee's house. Oh, wow. As I remember Joni taught pointing out. She's like, you know who did this? I was like, no, but it's gorgeous. It's a portrait of Stan. And she goes, Charles Schultz. And I was like, Charlie Brown? She goes, Snoopy. <laughs> she's a wonderful, wonderful woman. Uh, she'll be deeply missed by anyone who ever met her, but she'll, of course, be most deeply missed by Stan. So. Yeah, so I wanted to give her a little, uh, a little do tonight. Yeah, give it Absolutely. up for Absolutely, applaud for her.